something new NASA is worried about. It's warning over raining nuclear rocks striking Earth. Well, we know that we're getting bombarded every year, every day actually, but every year the total is about 40,000 tons of space dust. 40,000 tons added to our Earth. Can you imagine? Every single day we're getting bombarded with these little dusts of uh, foreign rocks, little bodies, little asteroids that we can't see, but they're coming in at us, and they total of about 40,000 tons annually. And of course they carry things with them. Now Callum Hoare on Express UK reports this. A scientist recently warned NASA during a book that uh, a space agency's plans to save Earth from an asteroid could result in radioactive material raining down, of course. Natalie Starkey, a cosmochemist concerned about protecting Earth for future generations, of course. She's the author behind the 2018 book called Catching Stardust. And inside the book, Dr. Starkey discusses how asteroids and the million of small rocky bodies that lurk within the inner solar system could one day end life on Earth. Well, there have been extinction level events because of asteroid strikes in the past on Earth and uh, it could uh, very well happen in the future. Not in the imminent future, but of course, who knows? Now, NASA is constantly scanning the cosmos and they have the asteroid tracking systems, the near-Earth objects, the potentially hazardous objects that they have to classify, categorizing them. And uh, if they could pose a threat, they, of course, inform us. After all, that's why they have the tracking system, and it's their duty to let us know. They have been warning us, of course, that they have no way of stopping an asteroid, and that we have to protect Earth and get ready to uh, find some kind of a system that would protect Earth from an inbound uh, impact. Now, if a space rock does manage to slip through the space defenses systems, as has happened in the past, recently even, there are several desperate measures that can be taken to save life on Earth, and it was revealed during Dr. Starkey's text. This is what she wrote last year. If we have very limited time, then we require an approach that can work in weeks or months. Okay, but that's assuming that you find this thing in weeks or months in advance. The thing is, a lot of these asteroids are found 20 hours in advance, if they're found in time. Because, look, the latest thing that has come to us, that has been found by an amateur astronomer, Borisov, was an interstellar comet. And that was not found by the major space agencies. She goes to say, So a more drastic method to avoid an impact with Earth, one that could work on any object regardless of its composition, might be called for. How about using a nuclear weapon? It might sound like total madness, but believe it or not, scientists are looking at the possibility of firing such a device at a space object to blow it into smithereens maybe even reducing it to a cloud of gas and liquid droplets. And she goes on to explain, it may sound like a great solution, but there's a potentially big problem. Dr. Starkey went on to explain how firing a nuclear weapon at a space rock could cause nuclear rain to head down onto us. Because if these things have ice, this would become nuclear, uh, nu uh, 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 radi irradiated water. She explains that the resultant shrapnel from this explosion, if it's small or big, would be highly radioactive, so it's probably not something we want raining down onto us. And she says this would almost certainly be the case if we blew up the object in short notice if it was heading towards us. If the object was on the passing Earth frequency, moving even closer to impact with each orbit, then it could be blown up in a preemptive strike on one of its prior close Earth visits, 
before the one that was predicted to cause the total annihilation of our Earth. So nuking it as it was heading away from Earth. All right? In other words, you know that it comes in, for example, let's take Apophis. She didn't say it here, but I'll say it. Apophis is supposed to be coming at us in 10 years. And uh, in April 13th, Friday, April 13th, 2028, and it won't hit us, but it may hit us uh, in 2068. So she's saying that as it's leaving us, go and nuke it then, when it's far away and it's not coming in towards Earth, but going out towards space, go and nuke it as it's going out towards space. That's what she wants to say. So that nothing comes back at us, which is, of course, a good solution. Now, in this way, any radioactive fallout from the destruction would not affect life on Earth, and it may sound like a relief that whatever happens, there is a strategy. That's one strategy. Others have others, for example, other strategies, such as, of course, uh, pounding it with a laser, which is cheaper and faster and uh, very effective. Now, despite this, Dr. Starkey raised a valid point over the politics behind firing a nuclear weapon into space, because you're not supposed to do that, supposedly. And she says, there are some further complications. She says, first, according to the Outer Space Treaty, nuclear weapons are not permitted to be used in space. Maybe in an extraordinary circumstance, such as a major threat to Earth, an exception could be made to save us from impending doom. But she seems to think that that's the only solution, using nuclear weapons. And she says, second, a modern-day nuclear warhead probably would not survive the impact energies associated with this course of action, and instead it would more than likely need to be detonated close to the space object for the nuclear blast energy to nudge it to a different course, otherwise known as a nuclear standoff explosion. Now we have asteroid Bennu also coming at us, formerly known as 1999RQ36. Asteroid Bennu is a PHO listed on the century scale table. That's a potentially hazardous object with the second highest cumulative rating on the Palermo Technical Impact Hazard Scale. From 0 to 10, it's number 2. Uh, 10 is definite impact. Now, investigators have already warned the space agency that it could be devastating if they do not act, that is, have an Earth Protection System. And according to a study by scientist Maria Eugenia Sansatorio, Asteroid Bennu may impact the Earth. This is according to her. Dr. Sassatoria warned in a report for the Solar System Journal Icarus, there's a good chance of the asteroid striking Earth. She told Universe Today back in 2010, the total impact probability of asteroid Bennu can be estimated at 0 0.00092, approximately 1 in a 1,000 chance, but what is most surprising is that over half of this chance corresponds to the year 2182. But NASA has a less destructive move for Bennu. NASA is currently using uh, the mission with OSIRIS-REx spacecraft to find out more about this space rock. The spacecraft sent two, uh, spent two years chasing Bennu down, orbiting it for another two years to take samples. And in 2023, it will be uh, it will blast back to Earth to allow scientists from around the world to study the sample. In other words, it's going to bring back the sample from Bennu to Earth. And whatever that contains, God forbid if it contains any virus. Now, the mission team is particularly interested in learning the role of asteroids like Bennu. They're dark, primitive, and carbon-rich, and may have played in the uh, part in the creating life on Earth. And it will also help scientists redefine the odds of a strike on Earth. In other words, is it soft? Is it uh, icy? Is it metallic? Is it heavy iron-like? And that way they can uh, estimate what they have to use against it. God forbid. I mean, I don't even know. Uh, this is really... <laughs> 
really far out. But we can't hide our heads in the uh, sand like storks. We have to protect Earth from these things because they've happened in the past. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.